Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about Quick Tip 7. And settle. Number one, center anchor point. In the last Quick Tips, we talked about centering an anchor point using the pan behind tool. But a bunch of people, these people down here, told me about another way to do it, and uh, it's with a shortcut I've long since forgotten. And so we're gonna click this text right here, and we're gonna hit Command Option Home, you see that puts that in the center of our text, which is nice because that actually vertically centers this as well. And then you can just let go of option and hit command home and it goes right to the center of the comp. So that's super helpful. And there's also a bonus tip I found here while I was messing around. If you have this like this and you're over here with your layer, you can actually hit option home and that'll send it to the front. Or if you want to send it to the tails to the end, option end. So that's pretty useful as well. Okay, number two. This one has changed my life. So you probably know that you can click in here and do math. So like if you do like divide that by two, you get 270. But what if you want to take this thing that's already animated and move it down a little bit? Well, the easy solution here is to be on one of the keyframes, click the property so that everything gets selected, click here, and instead of doing like 540 plus something, just do plus 200. And that'll move all the keyframes down by 200 in the Y. What's great is that you can also do this just like divide by two, like we did before. Or if you only want to do it on the one keyframe, we can also just do divide by two. So you don't have to put the math at the end in order for it to use that value. So there's one problem you might run into, and that's everything works except for subtraction. So what you need to do that is you need to add a negative number. Because otherwise, if you just put in like negative 30 here, you'll just set them all to negative 30, which is probably not what you want. But if we select everything and do plus negative 30, everything will move back 30 pixels. Oh yeah. All right, number three, laptop shortcuts. I'm not 100% positive if these work on Windows, so you're gonna have to experiment with that. But if you're on a Mac laptop and you wanna do something like RAM preview, yeah, I'm gonna still call it that. You can't really hit zero on the number pad because there is no number pad. But what you can do is substitute the control key, and this actually works on desktop too, so you can test it out, I guess, that way. But if you hit control zero on the top row, it'll still do the RAM preview. This is especially helpful if you're trying to put markers down and you can't do the asterisk on the number pad. You might wonder how that translates since that key is missing from the top row. It turns out that it's eight. Well, the asterisk is on eight. So if you hit control eight, it'll put a marker down. All right, so number four. I don't exactly remember why this was useful, but when it comes around, you'll know. So you have some things that are moving around and you wanna stop it from moving for some reason, but you don't wanna lose the keyframes. So let's leave this red thing behind. I'm going to set it to, let's say, 0, 0. Hit enter. And now it goes up here to 0, 0. We see whatever we're going to do here. Get rid of this. Your keyframes are intact. All right, number six. I mean five. This one is a real time saver. Let's say we have this stroke and this fill here, and I want to knock out that fill. Well, normally you click on this layer. You have to click on this, and half the time you click on color out of habit. And then you go over here, you turn this off, and whatever. Let me undo that. There's a quicker way to do that. If you hold your option key, click on this, you can click until it's gone. And it'll switch through all the modes to the gradient and all that other stuff. You can bring it back the same way. Same thing for the stroke, obviously. Although sometimes it might change depending on what you have your color set to. But usually you're doing that to turn it off. It's not the swap button that I've always wanted, but it's a step in the right direction. All right, number six. This one is especially helpful if you're using something like Ray. Say you're in your effects panel over here and you wanna change the color of this. You can't select any of these in order to actually use Ray. But if you double click on any of this stuff in here, it'll open it up in the timeline and then you can add Ray to it. The same thing goes that if this is all the way down here and you're up in here somewhere and you want to open this up in the effects panel, you can double click the name of the effect here and it'll scroll to it and then you can just scroll up a little bit. I don't know why it doesn't scroll to the bottom, but you know, it's close. Number seven, vector math. This one came in as a response to something I was trying to do, although it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it's still useful to know. What I wanted was something that I could multiply the, like the first position and the second position of two different vectors together, but I don't think that's actually available in After Effects. However, if you need to multiply them by the same number or divide them by the same number, there are functions for that, and that's cool. So this square right here actually has its position value multiplied 1.5 times from the value of this one, which is kind of interesting because they'll get closer as they get into this corner, but way farther away as they get into this corner. In order to do that, we have functions multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Add and subtract can actually add two vectors together, though. So that's useful. But if you need to multiply both values by the same number or divide both values by the same number, 
You can use the mole function or the div function, or just pick one because multiplication and division are technically the same function. All right, number eight. This one comes to us from Sev. He's useful for more than just cinema, guys. So one day I was talking to him about putting a bunch of items into a new folder, because you can do that in Mac OS and it's kind of a pain that you can't do it in After Effects. And he's like, you can. And this is how. You select all the stuff that you want to put into a new folder, and where you would think you'd make like a new folder button, you can see that that fails. But if you take all of these things and you drop them onto the folder button, now you have yourself a new folder. And that new folder contains all of the things you put in it. All right, number nine. I saw this one pop up on Twitter. It's interesting. I don't really know exactly what I'd use it for, but it's pretty cool. So if you have any of these color properties here, you can actually click and drag to change the color. I'm not sure how it changes the color. I thought maybe it followed like a color wheel or maybe the actual like hue saturation box or something, but I can't really determine how it moves. But if you just need to make a couple of quick colors, different ways, you can use that. One note is that if this is black or white, you can't do anything with it. So just keep that in mind. All right, number 10, preservation. You know how back in the 90s you would finish a movie or something and you'd be screwing around your computer or something like that and you'd be watching that little DVD icon move around and just waiting for it to hit the corner, but it never, never really would. Just never make it. But if you want to relive that nostalgia of that really slow and blocky movement, it's really kind of hard to get that in After Effects sometimes, isn't it? But if you make your animation say like, I don't know, 15 frames per second, and you hit like Command K, bring up these composition settings, and you click on Advanced, there's a thing in here that says Preserve Resolution and Preserve Frame Rate when nested or in Render Queue. So let's just check these two things right here. So this will be 15 frames per second. I have this thing set to quarter res, so that'll be saved into the other comp. So when we go back, we have ourselves a nice blocky old school DVD screen. And trust me, it's, it's never going to hit that corner. All right, that's it. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.